Hey Rachel, how are you doing? Hi Marcia, oh I'm well, I think I'm just about keeping sane and locked down, how are you? I'm bearing up, I'm bearing up, but a bit disappointed to see that you are in what looks to be your study. Um, <laughs> I was rather hoping to get a virtual tour of your bathroom, but I'm guessing that <laughs> I've got no real excuse for that, given that we're still in the middle of the working day. So instead of looking at your toiletries, um, how about that we have a chat about the temporary insolvency practice direction yeah. at COVID and remote hearings? <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but I've been bombarded with loads of mail shots, um, largely ambulance chasing, and if not ambulance chasing, motivational. And uh, I've had enough of those. Um, I'm not sure that we need any more. So really what I want to talk to you about is sort of practical consequences, especially in the light of the practice direction. Yeah. The biggest nightmare for me until the practice direction came out uh, the day before yesterday, on the 6th of April, was not knowing what was happening to my upcoming hearings in front of the ICC judges. And I wasn't able to advise my clients whether or not um, there was any point now in issuing proceedings when there was no certainty or likelihood uh, of, of obtaining a hearing date anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, but uh, now we're out of the woods there. Yeah. Well, we have got some clarity. So the new insolvency, well, the temporary insolvency practice direction was signed off on the 6th of April 2020. Um, and we've got it until the 1st of October. And um, it applies to all proceedings in the business and property courts subject to variations outside London. Um, but if we have a look at the practice direction um, in terms of what gets heard and what doesn't get heard. Um, so Patty, she's got one. There's one she prepared <laughs> earlier. <It is. laughs> um, so paragraphs four to seven confirm basically that everything except um, the winders and bankruptcy petitions will be adjourned. So everything that was listed for hearing before the 21st of April um, is automatically adjourned off, unless it's urgent, in which case you can apply for it to be relisted. Um, now, when I first looked at that, I thought that it suggested that all non-urgent matters that have been adjourned would just be off somewhere in the ether and we'd have no idea how we'd get them back on and relisted. But there is some reassurance in that ICC, Chief ICC Judge Briggs um, issued a guidance note yesterday, I think it came out, and he said that um, the adjourned non-urgent hearings are all intended to be relisted within six weeks from the 21st of April and that priority will be given to those matters over the listing of other non-urgent matters. So that's at least some reassurance that our cases will be coming back on relatively quickly in the summer. But I suppose that the, the, the quid pro quo is that we have to advise our clients who have hearings listed at the back end of May, June, July, that they might get bumped further down the list. But you know that's something uh, that we're just gonna have to live with. I mean, in terms of urgency, I think it's important that we all remember that if you've got an urgent hearing, you'll get it heard yes and you've got to certify urgency in the usual way yes. um so uh, to that very important extent there there's no change there yeah i mean then you look at paragraph six which really just confirms what we all now know to be the reality which is that all hearings that are heard will be heard remotely and unless the judge says it can't be or the parties persuade the court that it can't be in terms of the latter I think you'll have an uphill battle persuading a judge that your hearing can't be heard remotely, given the fact that I know in the commercial court they're pushing ahead with trials and um, most insolvency applications that can be heard remotely are being heard remotely. Yeah, there is a presumption there. And, and you see that in the provisions dealing with uh, bankruptcy and winding up petitions. Yeah. Uh, you'd think that simply because of the sheer volume and fast turnaround, they would be impossible to manage remotely. But no, practice direction says they're going to be dealt with two at a time in batches. How quite that's going to work for litigants in person, and there is, you know, loads of those in bankruptcy, yeah. um, we don't know. But that's very, very strong evidence for the presumption that it is going to be business as usual. Definitely. Yeah, and in terms of the winding up petitions and bankruptcy, and the meeting link for Skype, or, biz, or BT Meet Me, I think the telephone hearings, will be published on the daily cause list. So that's something to look out for because that's where the link will be as well. Okay, good to know. 
Uh, there is uh, also, um, you know, every cloud having a silver lining and all that. We've got at last in paragraph three, a really extensive and comprehensive and easy to understand regime dealing uh, with the timings on out of court appointments, um, notice of appointments and, and, and notices of appointments. And, and of course we had those, uh, uh, an extraordinary number of conflicting and indigestible and very, very overly in my view, technical yeah. decisions about um, when appointments took effect. Um, from memory, we had HMV, we had Henderson, we had London Spaces, we had Skeggs, we had loads of them all saying different things in, in, in subtly different ways. But the short point now, if you look at paragraph three of the practice direction, is that a notice of appointment and a notice of intention filed by a company or its directors outside uh, court hours will be treated as having been filed at 10 o'clock on the next day that the uh, court counter is open. Yeah. So uh, that's great. Clarity in three paragraphs uh, instead of uncertainty in six or seven authorities. Yeah, definitely. Um, the only other point I suppose is that the um, practice direction is oddly silent on notices of intention filed by qualifying floating charge holders. It doesn't say anything about whether they're allowed to do that or not outside of um, court counter times. But I think we assume um, that the answer is they are permitted to do that. Um, and that's in line with the decision in SJ Henderson, which was a judgment of ICC Judge Burton. That must make sense. And I guess that was a standalone decision. So no, no reason to interfere with that. Yeah. Uh, and then what about remote hearings? How are you getting on with those? Well, <laughs> I'm finding a top tip for solicitors and a way to get brownie points early on with the judges is just to make sure that the bundles are easily accessible. So um, the judges seem quite keen at the moment on hyperlinks for indexes so that you can click your way through the bundle. And particularly if the bundle runs to hundreds of pages, as they often do, it's just an easy way to navigate through because otherwise it's impossible because you can't tab it up as you know well, that's brilliant actually because I had a hearing recently and because the electronic bundles weren't easily navigable uh, I ended up having to read out the contents of a lot of key documents which which really slowed things down the other the other challenge I think is 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 actually setting up a channel of communication with your instructing solicitor and client team the hearing I did recently um, uh, we we set up a whatsapp group and that worked out really, really well during the course of the hearing. Yeah, really good idea, because you don't want everyone to be hearing your instructions from your solicitors during the hearing. Or the ultimate nightmare, sending an instant message via Skype to the other side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the other strange thing, of course, is having your opponent muted and blanked out, so his or her mic off while you're talking. Uh, I found that you know, quite bizarre because, you know, well, it's like you learn quite a lot by watching your opponent uh, and their body language and their facial expressions in the course of the hearing, especially if they're a huffer and a, and a puffer yeah. or a turner of post-it notes. Yeah. But it's a new world that we're going to have to get used to. Definitely. Yeah. You yeah. know what? I'm going to have a virtual coffee. Are you yeah. up for that? Gin and tonic, surely. Surely it's you're out of your mind. <laughs> in the afternoon. Yeah, a bit early. Maybe a bit early for that. <laughs> yeah, go on then. Well, in these uncertain times, I think we're all drinking a bit earlier. <laughs> desperate times, desperate measures. See you in a bit. Nice to speak to you, Marcia. Bye. Bye.